In this video, we'll take a look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IO101 Vectorscope. I'll give a little background on what color bar, dot generators, and vectorscopes are, and how they're used for television servicing. We'll cover the specific features of this instrument, and look at the front panel controls and inside circuitry. I'll discuss the restoration of this particular unit, and say something about the circuit design it used. We'll see a demonstration of the vectorscope in operation, and then wrap things up with a summary. The IO101 combines the features of two other Heathkit instruments, the IG28 color bar and dot generator, and the IO1128 vectorscope. I've made another video on the IG28, so this video repeats some of the same information as that video. When televisions used cathode ray tubes, or CRTs, for display, complex adjustments were needed to properly align the coils and magnets that were used to control the electron beam so that it displayed a proper image on the face of the CRT. Color televisions typically used a CRT with three electron guns, one for each of the red, green, and blue colors, and required even more careful alignment. This alignment included what was called purity adjustment to ensure a uniform brightness and color hue across the screen, as well as convergence adjustments to ensure that the three electron beams were properly aligned with a grid of holes called the shadow mask over the full area of the screen. A pattern or dot generator was a common piece of television servicing equipment that produces a known good video signal with test patterns for adjusting the screen alignment of televisions. Common patterns include a series of dots and vertical and or horizontal lines that aid in adjusting the display. Bar generators produce a series of bars that allow checking, in the case of black and white television, the correct display of different shades of gray, and with color television to check for the proper reproduction of the different shades of color. Pattern generators and bar generators are sometimes separate instruments, or as in the case of the IO101, can be features of the same unit. A dot and bar generator may produce a radio frequency or RF output and be connected directly to the antenna terminals of the television under test, or it may provide a video signal that can be ejected into the circuitry of the unit under test. A vectorscope is a special type of oscilloscope that can be used in audio and video applications. While a general purpose oscilloscope normally displays a plot of voltage versus time, a vectorscope displays an XY plot of two signals which can reveal details about the relationship between them. Vectorscopes are similar in operation to oscilloscopes operated in XY mode, but are typically intended for specific measurements such as video applications and have specialized graticules, the markings on the front of the display. They accept standard television or video signals as input. In video applications, a vectorscope was most often used to analyze the chrominance or color characteristics of the signals in a color television, plotting the blue and red chrominance signals against each other. When a color bar signal is applied to the television receiver's input, a vectorscope will show a distinctive petal pattern, called that because it resembles the petals of a flower, that indicates when the color circuits are correctly adjusted. Wikipedia has a good article on vectorscopes that gives more background information. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit produced several models of television bar and dot generators, starting with the BG1 bar generator in 1954, and followed by the CD1 color bar and dot generator in 1957, and the IG62 in 1962. The IG28 was a solid-state replacement for the IG62, introduced in 1969 and sold until 1977. The IO101, the subject of this video, includes the same color bar dot bar generator features and circuitry as the IG28. Later color bar generators were the IG5258, offered from 1977 to 1982, in the IG5240 portable unit shown here from 1976 to 1985. The IO101 was the first vector scope offered by Heathkit. It was sold from 1970 to 1977. As I mentioned, the same pattern generator functions were offered as the model IG28. An identical vector scope without the pattern generator was offered as the IO1128 vector monitor. In 1977, the IO-101 was replaced with the electrically identical but cosmetically different IO-4101 vector scope, which sold until 1980. The IO-101 was sold from 1970 to 1977 and typically sold in the U.S. for $124.95. 
It was offered only as a kit that the user assembled. The catalog listing said it went together in about 12 hours of assembly time. Typical of Heath kits, it came with a detailed assembly and operation manual and all parts including a nut starter, Allen wrench, IC puller, two to three pin AC plug adapter and even a roll of solder. The unit is all solid state except for the CRT and is suitable for both black and white and color television servicing, although the vector display is only relevant for color television. The color bar dot generator circuitry provides an all white raster pattern for purity adjustment as well as the following patterns cross hatch, vertical lines, horizontal lines, color bars, and grayscale bars, all with either a 3x3 or 9x9 display. Heathkit said that the 3x3 display was exclusive to Heathkit. It can produce RF output on VHF channels 2 through 6 with adjustable output level. It can also produce a video signal with adjustable level and polarity. The chroma level of the video signal is adjustable and a sync signal is provided on a front panel jack. The unit can inject a 4.5 MHz sound carrier to test adjustment of IF sound trap circuits. The video signals are available from test leads that are hardwired to the unit and have alligator jacks. The vector scope function displays a pedal pattern using a 3 inch CRT display. It connects to the picture tube red, green and blue grid or cathode signals using the supplied test leads. Switches provide the ability to disable any of the three color guns for test purposes. On the rear panel, two unswitched convenience AC outlets are provided to power the television set or other test equipment. A switch is provided to select whether the television under test provides the chroma signals on the cathode or grid pins of the CRT. This needs to be set according to the unit under test. The unit is fused and provides a power cord with a grounded three-prong plug. A coax cable with test leads is for the RF or video output signal. Another cable is for the ground and red, green and blue input signals for connecting to the picture tube of the television under test. Note the special insulation piercing alligator clips on the RGB leads. These would be clipped onto the wires going to the CRT socket. The brackets on the back are for winding the test leads around to keep them in place. The leads are permanently attached, which prevents them from being lost as otherwise often happens on old test equipment like this. The unit can be wired for 120 or 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz, but note that it only supports the NTSC composite format video used in North America and not other formats like PAL commonly used in Europe. The case is similar to a lot of the IG instrument series, but smaller. I believe this style of case was only used in a few Heathkit products. At top left is the 3 inch CRT. The gradical markings indicate 10 different angles corresponding to the positions of the pedals in the displayed pattern when a color bar signal is being measured on the picture tube of the television under test. We'll see a demonstration of that shortly. At top right is the intensity control for adjusting the brightness of the display. It's also pulled to turn the unit on. Below that are the horizontal and vertical position controls that adjust the position of the display trace. With no signal applied, the display will show a dot that can be centered in the middle of the gradical using these controls. Both position controls also have a trimmer adjustment that's accessed by removing the knobs and inserting a screwdriver into the center of the shaft. These are used to adjust the display focus and astigmatism, which only needs to be set occasionally. The RF video control is turned to adjust the level and polarity of the video output signal and pulled out to select video output and pressed in to select radio frequency output. The chroma control adjusts the intensity of the chrominance or color in the video signal. When pulled out, a 4.5 MHz sound carrier signal is added to the video signal. This is used to test adjustment of a television's IF sound trap circuits. The channel control continuously adjusts the frequency of the RF output from VHF channels 2 through 6 and is a vernier dial. The pattern switch selects between purity, dots, crosshatch, horizontal lines, vertical lines, color bars, or grayscale bars. The display switch determines whether the test patterns are a 3x3 or 9x9 display of dots, lines, or bars. 
As many as 11 vertical or 10 horizontal lines or dots may be shown depending on whether the television display shows the edges of the screen. Most receivers have what is called overscan and typically only show 9 by 9. The three red, blue and green gun controls select whether the corresponding signals are disabled by grounding the picture tube grid or cathodes using the test leads for direct connection to the CRT. The sync jack provides sync output which can be used for servicing sync signals without video or sets having separate video and sync demodulators. Finally, power on is indicated by a red neon pilot lamp. Taking a look inside, the circuitry is contained on two printed circuit boards and some point-to-point -point wiring. At the rear is circuitry related to the high voltage power supply for the CRT. It should be noted that the CRT voltage is approximately 850 volts DC, which is beyond what many digital multimeters are rated to safely measure. I used a times 100 high voltage probe to check it. It also has the wiring for the grid cathode switch and the wiring to the cables and the fuse and two power outlets. Note that the AC and high voltages do not go to either of the PCBs, which is good for safety reasons. Note the copper strap around the power transformer to reduce magnetic flux leakage, which could otherwise affect a nearby television under adjustment or the CRT inside the unit. In the middle is a large PCB or printed circuit board containing the majority of the circuitry. This one and the other PCB are single-sided, made of fiberglass, and have silkscreen markings, but no solder mask, which is typical of boards of this era. Being single-sided, there are some jumpers to make interconnections. The video signal is built up using digital logic chips from a 190.08 kHz master clock. It uses 10 integrated circuits, which are 700 series, a logic family known as RTL, or resistor transistor logic, which ran on 3.6 volts DC, and was later mostly superseded by 7400 series TTL logic. It's interesting to see how the different video signals for the test patterns, including color, were created using flip-flops and logic gates. The chips have the Heathkit part numbers printed on them, an indication that Heathkit was able to buy chips in high enough volume, in this case from Motorola, to have them custom branded. The ICs use an inexpensive type of IC sockets made of separate pins. There are three crystals used for oscillators as well as some analog circuitry. There are also several trim pots and caps which need to be adjusted during calibration of the unit. The CRT mounts on the front panel and used a socket which is wired to the rear panel. The CRT is a 3-inch 3RP1A type with a flat face and green phosphor. Mounted at the front is the small video circuit board which generates the RF signals which can be tuned from channels 2 through 6 using a variable capacitor. There is one inductor which is made from tracks on the circuit board. There's also wiring to the front panel controls and switches. The design makes use of a factory assembled wiring harness to simplify construction. A couple of the controls are of an unusual dual type. I've seen concentric controls, but not this type, where the trimmers are hidden behind a knob. The RF control uses a pot and quite a complex switch. The RF cable is shielded coax. The CRT cables make use of insulation piercing pins, so you can clip them onto the wires going to the CRT socket. I'll now demonstrate some of the functions of the unit. I'm using a solid-state CRT-based color television made in 1983. The IO-101's RF cables are connected to the television's cable input. The TV is tuned to channel 2, and the IO-101 is set for RF output and a crosshatch test pattern. We adjust the IO-1 tuning control around channel 2 until we get the best image. Now we can see the various test patterns that are available. A plain white raster, dots, crosshatch, horizontal lines, vertical lines, color bars, and grayscale bars. Now these are in the 9x9 mode. We can also see them all in the 3x3 mode. Again, grayscale, color bars, vertical lines, horizontal lines, crosshatch, dots, and purity or a pure white screen. With the color bars displayed, 
Adjusting the chroma knob changes the level of color in the signal. Pulling out the chroma control turns on a 4.5 MHz sound carrier signal. And you can see some cross-hatching in the image as the set's not able to fully filter out the sound carrier. In an incorrectly adjusted set, this would be much more noticeable. Adjusting the video control, we can change the signal level and polarity. In this case, we want a positive video signal, but depending on where in the television receiver you injected the signal, you might need it to be inverted. To use the vector scope function, we need to connect the cables to the television's picture tube. You need to know if the TV uses grid or cathodes for driving the chroma or color signals. This could be determined from the schematic diagram for the set. This TV has test points marked that corresponded to the cathodes, so I assumed it was using the cathodes and I found that it worked. The switch on the back of the IO101 unit also needs to be set accordingly to the grid or cathode position. If the switch position is incorrect, the pedal pattern will be rotated 180 degrees. I couldn't clip the test leads to the wires going to the CRT socket as this set uses a small printed circuit board right on the back of the CRT. I located the cathodes on the back and I tack soldered some wires and then connected those to the tester. For the test we use a color bar signal. The television decodes the signal and sends the color information to the red, green and blue guns of the CRT. We then pick those signals off and look at them on the vector scope. In color bar mode, a trace appears on the CRT. With the television off, we can adjust the brightness and use the vertical and horizontal position controls to center the spot. With the TV set on and tuned into the color bar signal, we can see a distinctive pattern of pedals, which can be compared to the expected patterns in the manual. Each pedal corresponds to a color bar. If we switch from 9x9 to 3x3 mode, we can see fewer pedals. If we turn down the chroma control to reduce the level of color, the pedals get smaller. On the television, we can adjust the controls, including tint, color, brightness, and contrast. This is tint. Color. Brightness. and contrast. The manual has extensive coverage of how to use the unit to perform television alignment, including linearity, purity, and static and dynamic convergence, and color demodulator phase adjustment. It also has a section covering the relevant principles of color television, troubleshooting the unit, and the theory of operation of the vector scope. I bought this unit on eBay from a local seller in Ottawa in May of 2018. It was in good shape other than being a little dirty on the outside. The inside was clean. It appears to have all the original parts and no modifications. The ICs have date codes ranging from 1971 to 1973. I couldn't find a complete manual, so I ordered one from the company Manual Man. It arrived in a few days and is of the usual excellent quality with spiral binding and all the fold-out illustrations. The unit seemed to be working when powered up. I cleaned it well inside and out, cleaned the switches and controls with contact cleaner, and I removed and cleaned the case and graticule. I measured the values of the resistors and caps and measured the ESR of all the electrolytic caps. All parts measured okay except for one of the two 20 microfarad 500 volt filter caps across the high voltage supply, which was bad. It had an open circuit. I ordered replacements from JustRadios.com and changed out both of the caps. 
I measured all voltages and confirmed that they were within spec. The video output signal was intermittent when flexing the RF printed circuit board. I reheated some of the solder joints and it became reliable. I then went through the test and adjustment procedure as per the manual, adjusting some of the trimmer pots and caps for correct signals as observed on an oscilloscope. Color television was pushing the limits of what was possible with vacuum tube technology in the 1960s. Full alignment of a color TV was quite a complex and time-consuming process. Alignment of a television required a test pattern color bar generator. The vector scope function was less commonly used. You could align TVs without one, but it made color adjustment faster and easier. This type of equipment is now obsolete for a number of reasons. Modern TVs typically no longer require alignment. The circuitry is fixed and or it aligns itself. Furthermore, analog television broadcasting using the NTSC standard has been phased out in most of North America and replaced by digital television, although most televisions still accept an analog video input. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.